everyone. Okay, so in this video, we are looking at finding the nth roots of complex numbers. So what does that mean? So we want to find the roots of complex numbers. So for example, say I have the complex number z to the power of n, right? That is equal to some complex number in polar form, where z is also a complex number. Well, in order to compute the roots of a complex number, well, I have to put both sides to the power of 1 over n. And if you recall, z to the power of 1 over n, that is going to be equal to the nth root of z. So if it was z to the power of a half, we're finding the square root of z. If it was z to the power of a third, we're finding the third root of z. But in order to use the in order to compute the roots, we need to use the Moivre's theorem to compute the roots of complex numbers. And we must first write the complex numbers in general polar form. So what is general polar form? So if we're asked to find the roots of complex numbers, we're gonna have more than one solution, right? So we're gonna have more than one solution. If I am looking for the fifth roots of complex numbers, I'm gonna have five solutions as indicated by the power of five up here. If I'm looking for the cubed roots of a complex number, I am looking for three solutions. So, so in order to get multiple solutions, that's why we use the general polar form, because since we're dealing with trig functions and cosine and sine, right, they're very periodic in nature. So that's why we all have to use the general polar form, because that would give me my multiple solutions. That's why we have to add in my argument 2 pi n. And you may be very familiar with this, because this is just a period of that function, which we saw back in trig equations. So. General polar form, right, before we apply it to Moivre's theorem, is you add 2 pi n to each of the arguments. So, how do we do it? So, you first rewrite your complex number in polar form. You then rewrite it in general polar form. Then you get the nth root of both sides, and then you use the Moivre's theorem. And then finally, to start getting all of my roots of my complex number, I sub in values of n. And I start with n is 0. So if I'm looking for three roots of z, it's going to be n is 0, n is 1, n is 2. If I'm looking for five roots, it's going to be n is 0, n is 1, n is 2, n is 3, n is 4. That gives me 5. So, um, so again, just remember to know here, writing a general polar form allows to find multiple solutions due to the fact that both cosine and sine are periodic functions. Equations such as the cube root of z have three solutions, the fourth root of z has four solutions, the sixth root of z has six solutions, etc. So remember, we have to start with n is equal to zero. So let's look at this example here. z squared is equal to one plus root three i. Find z. So z is equal to one plus root three all to the power of a half. So I'm finding the square root of z. So I take a half of both sides. So I take the reciprocal of this two. So this two here is going to become a half here. So first, let's rewrite it in polar form. So rewrite in polar form. That is going to be equal to, or is equal to the square root of one squared plus root three squared is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Right, so my modulus is 2. Then let's look for my argument. So plot it out here. Uh, both positive, so it's going to be the first quadrant. Happy days. This is my reference angle. Bing, bing, bing. So this is 1 plus root 3. This side's root 3. This side triangle is 1. So tan of my reference angle is equal to root 3 over 1. My reference angle is going to be equal to a third pi, I believe. Let me just double check myself. I always have to double check myself. One third pi. So, and then, since it's in the first quadrant, my argument is still just equal to one third pi. So, now that I have my or and my argument, in polar form, this can be written as two times cosine one third pi plus i sine one third pi. So there is my complex number in polar form. But now I need to rewrite it in general polar form. The general polar form is going to be equal to two times cosine 
one third pi plus two pi or two n pi plus i sine one third pi plus two n pi. Right, so now what's happening is, so sorry, this is z squared. So, and um, this is z squared. So I want to get z on its own. So I'm going to square root both sides, i.e. put both sides to the pair of a half. Now I apply De Moivre's theorem. So z is going to be equal to 2 to the pair of a half times cosine bracket. Now I multiply my entire argument by a half. So it's going to be a third pi times a half is going to give me one sixth pi or pi over six because a third times a half is one sixth plus two n pi times a half is just going to be n pi. Now you don't need to um, do it out here like I'm doing. You literally could just put in your calculator and multiply it all by a half, but you just have to remember to get your brackets right so you're multiplying the entire argument by a half. So plus i sine, and then same over here, be pi over six plus n pi. So then let's start subbing in values of n. So n is zero. So I'm gonna have two solutions to this. So n is zero. So two to the power of a half is just root two. It's gonna be cosine pi over six plus i sine pi over six because zero pi is just zero. Put this in our calculator, we get. And uh, we get, so cosine pi over six. So be root two times root three over two plus i sine pi over six, which is equal to a half. So my first solution is, oh, it's i half. So my first solution is gonna be root six over two plus i root two over two. That is my first solution because I multiplied in the root two there. Now let's do n is equal to one. N is equal to one, so I have root two times cosine pi over six plus one times pi plus i sine pi over six plus one times pi. That is gonna be equal to root two times minus root three over two plus i sine of pi over six plus pi, which is equal to minus a half. So my second root or my second solution is gonna be multiply this out. It's gonna be minus root six over two, uh, minus root two over two i. And these are my two solutions to this. So if I squared both of these uh, complex numbers, I should get one plus root three. So I do apologize if you couldn't see it there. Right, so. Right, let's look at some exam questions. So let's look at the 2021 question. So um, use the Moyes theorem, find the three roots of z cubed is equal to minus eight. Give your answers in the form A plus B, I. So first we need to write it in polar form, right? Rewrite in polar form. So I've done a load of these on this channel, so if you're, not, so if you're a bit confused and have to write in polar form, please watch my previous videos. But this written in polar form is going to be z cubed is equal to 8 times cosine pi plus i sine pi. Right, so now we need to write it in general polar form, which is going to be z cubed is equal to... So 8 times cosine pi plus 2n pi plus i sine pi plus 2n 
pi. Take the cubed root of both sides. Take the cubed root of both sides. Bing, bing, bong, bong. Apply to Moore's theorem. Z is equal to eight to the power of a third times cosine one third pi plus two n pi over three plus i sine uh, one third pi or just pi over three if it's just easier. Pi over three. Pi over three plus two n pi. Uh, so let's sub in values of n. So we have z to the power of 3, so we have three solutions, so we're starting with n is 0. So that is going to be equal to uh, the cube root of 8 is 2, so 2 cosine pi over 3 plus 2 times 0 pi over 3, which this is going to go to 0, so it's pi over 3, plus i sine pi over 3. Make sure you calculate some radians. 2 cosine, uh, so cosine pi over 3, which is equal to a half, so 2 times a half plus sine pi over 3, which is equal to i times root 3 over 2. Then my final answer is going to be 1 plus root 3i. That is my first solution. My second solution is going to be when n is equal to 1. So cosine pi over 3 plus 2 times 1 pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 plus 2 times 1 pi over 3, which is equal to, equal to uh, ba, 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 cosine pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 is equal to minus 1. That's 2 times minus 1. Then sine pi over 3 plus 2 pi over 3 is going to be 0. So my second solution is going to be minus 2 plus 0i. Then my final solution, when n is equal to 2, 2 times cosine pi over 3 plus 2 times 2 pi over 3 plus i sine pi over 3 plus 2 times 2 pi over 3. That is going to be equal to uh, 2 times a half plus Two times a half plus i times minus root three over two. Therefore, my final solution is one plus or one minus root three i. And they are my three solutions to this um question. Right. So I'll wrap today's video up here so in the next video i'll be doing some more exam questions and i hope this video was somewhat helpful to you guys and i'll catch you guys later bye <laughs>